lads had struggled to get in to work on their bags. The poor little shoes were hanging in tatters off their feet. Yet here at Bostlethwaite Pies, we always gave them a warm welcome. We're northern, we look after kith and kin, just like we do our pies. They're meaty, with a lovely fluffy crusty pastry to warm the heart and soul. Come up north and enjoy the taste of Postlethwaite's pies. Our lads have put them together with love and care and a bit of cat and dog. Welcome to another episode of Don't You Forget About the Postlethwaite 80s. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? <laughs> you enjoy my intro? <laughs> what was the what was the face you did at the end? That was that was Mr. Postlethwaite's <laughs> sad face. From what did he look like? What does, I do can't it again. No. <laughs> so um, it was going. So, I was watching it on the screen. <laughs> I was going brilliant. I will finish. You pulled it. I couldn't. I lost it. It was like your face melting. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. A, it was a kabuki wax face. Oh, I'm gonna blow it up on the. Uh, on when the, we're talking about that, I'm just gonna yeah, bring it up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Brilliant. That's gonna what I'm gonna use for the thumbnail. I love it. There we go. Puzzle sweet face. Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of our podcast. Don't you forget about the 80s. And this week is a deluxe edition. Deluxe, deluxe, deluxe. Deluxe. Is it? Toka toka. Siam peter. Deluxe. Go whiskey. Frasho. No. Something Paul Whitehouse did. No. On holiday in Gran Canaria. Oh. In. Original. 1990. Five. An advert off a TV program or something? Uh, what on, was this from? On local, on local Gran Canaria radio that we had on, there was an advert for um, 100 Pipers Scotch Whiskey. Mm. But of course, they couldn't say 100 Pipers Scotch Whiskey. So they went, Toka, 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 toka. Siam Peter, Deluxe Whiskey. Deluxe? Delu, deluxe, deluxe. Is what you said. Because <laughs> they say Scotch, they said Scott. Deluxe Scotty. Okay. Doka doka. I like that. Sounds like something from the Fast Show. Genuinely, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. But it wasn't. It was one of mine. Well, it wasn't one of mine. It was, it was whoever the advert writer was in Gran Canaria in '95. But yeah. So there we go. Cool. Anyway, I want to start this week's podcast before we get on to. Grace Jones and what an album. Grace Jones nightclubbing. And we are going to talk a bit about that album in more detail a bit later. We've got the 12 inch single of Pull Up to the Bumper as well. Pull up to the bump, baby. You said it was a deluxe? Deluxe edition. Um, yeah. Is it actually? Not really. Oh, okay. I just thought I'd, I wanted to get the word deluxe in. So you could do your I, bit. Where did I see that earlier? Oh, no. I was, the I was, word deluxe? Yeah. Maybe everywhere. No, I saw I saw an ad. I saw a program with some nineteen seventies cars on, and they always had like you started off with like the one point one S model, which was your base rubbish mm. with like really cheap cloth seats and yeah. and plastic trim, and two doors, and that was it, and a tiny engine. Mm. Then you went up to like the S E or the L S or whatever. What does S E stand for? Special edition. Special edition. Yeah. And then you went up to, and it, it went up, and then you got the deluxe model. The deluxe yeah. model. Or GLS, deluxe. GLS. Yeah, Grand Grand Lux Superior or whatever it is. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Grand Which was Lux like, Superior. Yeah, yeah, and you might have might have faux leather seats in that Ooh, and a faux, faux a faux wooden dash. I do like a yeah. faux leather. And I do. It's white clean, on. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't absorb your sweat and hold and on to other, it for a And other bodily fluids that might escape onto... Uh, gooch juice. What? <laughs> That's gooch juice. You know what the gooch is? 
No. No? Well, he's, I know, that's the, thought, that's the guy that stole Christmas. That's the Grinch, isn't it? Yeah. What's the Gooch? The Gooch is... How do I explain this nicely for a podcast? The nether region <coughs> between... Betwixt. Betwixt your uh, never-shining sun zone and your... Um, the perineum. Is that the real word for it? I think it is, yeah. Oh, we call it the gooch. Ah. I think it's a bit sweaty there oh, sometimes. Right. I don't want to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. So, okay, we're going to talk about Grace Jones and night clubbing. But before that, you said... Yes. Before that. Before that. Uh, I want to do... Uh, true or false? Ooh. So... This is a new thing for yeah. the podcast. True or false? So I'll fire quick fire questions at you. Yep. And you say true or false. Okay. Grace Jones was in a James Bond film. True. Do you know what character she played? No. Mayday. Do you know Mayday? which film it was? Yeah. Mayday in which film? Goldfinger. No. No. A View to a Kill. Soundtrack by? Drench Ran. Well done. Got it. True or false? You've been asked to make a film about your feet. True. <laughs> should I be, should I read this out? I think you should. should. I get the conversation out. I only, I only did the quiz to get that Just in. To get... <laughs> <laughs> One Grace Jones fact and a fact about what's going on in my weird life. I like that. That's essentially what the podcast is. 50% music and facts from the 80s. Yep. 50% nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is this on your... This Insta is on, face. This is Graham. <laughs> yes, you old man. It's on Instagram. I got a message the other day from a fellow, <laughs> a chap. I don't know, and he simply asked. He simply said, "Sorry, hey, great profile. How would you like to earn some extra pounds sending videos of your feet?" And I might have to beep this out. Yeah, beep it out. But um, your response already weird, already very weird, very. So when you first told me about this, yeah, and and I, and you genuinely I, looked well, shocked. I didn't believe you until you showed me it, and then I was like, <laughs> yeah. how, how, why? Welcome to the twenty first century. Why? It's weird. Why? I, I don't how, know. From your, what does he think you do? What? Why does he want to know about your feet? What? Yeah. Carry on. It's it's that some people are into that. Oh uh, well, okay. And people just go for it. These I just ask don't, it, don't care. They? Just carry. Anyway, on. in response to him, I said, "Go on then, you b you f meaty legend, dog dirt." <laughs> there were doing a lot of beeps there. <laughs> yeah. How much for one foot pick? <laughs> Obviously, pick being picture. Did you, did he did he re- realize that you meant like a physical? Foot that has attached the body as opposed to a length. A one foot pick. <laughs> <laughs> or you actually sent a one foot, a 12 inch long picture of your foot. <laughs> <laughs> a poster in the mail in a wrapped up tube. <laughs> he was quite quick to respond to that. Was he? Yeah, he quite was. And corrected me. Videos. Not pics for money, but £80 a minute. Yeah. For videos of my feet... Eighty pounds a minute. No pictures though. He won't pay for pictures. Doesn't matter. Eighty pounds a minute. Yeah, mate. If you're out there, I'll do it for forty. <laughs> well, I'll get to that. I've already cut my price down by half oh, on right. a special condition. <clears throat> so I responded again. Yeah. B- <laughs> <laughs> the beat. <laughs> okay. What kind of video? What about me eating a pork pie or other similar pocket meat? <laughs> the cheaper meats. <laughs> the cheaper meats. Yeah. <laughs> that linger on the breast. <laughs> <laughs> ones that you can carry around with you pocket me love it love it pocket. a pork pie a sausage roll maybe a scotch egg or those little pockets. those little packets of like fridge raiders that's it yeah fridge I can say dubious well. looking dubious chicken yeah from... dubious chicken they do those on skewers and they're really weird yeah. I had one the other day the whole thing is just one like one colour red why is that <laughs> do you know what I mean it's probably a pig's dick <laughs> Carry on. So, I said, yeah, I said, what about me eating a pork pie or other similar pocket meats? Immediate response within 10 minutes, no. 
<laughs> was it, was it in capitals? I didn't have an exclamation no, it was mark. Just, no, just you taking off shoes. What size feet do you have? <laughs> this is getting really bizarre. I know it gets more. I don't know what. I only showed you the beginning, didn't I? Yeah. I said, for f sake. Oh, so his username is Ollie B. Okay. I might bleep that out because yeah, you bleep. doxing and that's illegal. Yeah, bleep that out. Um, but anyway, so he, first half of it is Ollie. That's fine. I can give that. You've had out. to beat that out again, wouldn't you? No, no, no. Oh. Like I'm not giving the whole thing. Oh, right. But the first half of his username is Ollie. Right. Good luck finding him from that. So I replied, "For fuck's sake, Ollie, b lad, <laughs> you absolute weapon." So where do deli meats come into the equation? <laughs> I'm a legendary size ten, of course, and you. <laughs> I like the little, I like the little lead-on question at the end, yeah, yeah. just to pique his interest. I want him to tell me what size his feet are as well. <laughs> and he responded, "I sent that at two fifty-five. He responds at two fifty-eight. Why do you talk like this? Very odd. <laughs> I'm trying to find out if your feet are good for videoing. Here's the weird question: flat or arched?" Well, <laughs> well, I in I guess that in the world of feet videos, that's an important question. Yeah, but I don't know what's the better one. Arched. It's more sensuous, you isn't jump it? Jump to that very quickly. Sensuous. It's the sensuous curve of the foot. <laughs> I don't know. So I responded, "Ooh, you, b <laughs> you sly b Ollie. <laughs> they are the finest feet in all the north." I have northern feet. Is this acceptable? My feet are kind of shaped like sausage rolls with some slight curvature. He responds, let's see. <laughs> what did you send him? A picture and, and, of a sausage roll? Do you know what I was actually going to Greg? I was going to go to Greg's today, buy two sausage rolls. and Put them in your shoes. Put them, And when I pull my feet out, they're just two sausage rolls there instead. I'm going, well, that, what do you think? I think, I think uh, for the next podcast, you should keep this going. Send the picture. Keep leading him on. Okay. Yeah. And we'll pick this up again in the next one and see where it goes. We'll see. I'm intrigued. It goes on more. Oh, I, see, I, more? I thought we finished. No, oh, no, no. Okay. So he goes, let's see. <clears throat> I didn't respond for a day. Sorry, mate. We're sorting the big check-ins account out. You know how it is. Right, you... <laughs> right, you f b <laughs> In capitals. <laughs> if I give you a look, then you get what you want. And I don't get any pocket meat in my pocket now, do I? <laughs> so how's that going to work, baby? <laughs> I just, he says, I just need to see your feet to see if they are good enough. Then I will pay £80 a minute for video. Still interested? And um, I said, I'll only send it if you buy me a deli meat. If you send me deli meats, I'll do it for half the price, you bad. <laughs> no response. There's going to be an awful lot of bleeping on this, uh, this there part might of the be. podcast. If you can lip read, then you get the gist yeah. of it. But I've used the same word over and over again. <laughs> There we go. Anyway, yeah. that answers that. That's a Ollie. good five, ten oh. minutes of the podcast. Yeah, Ollie, you're a lad. <laughs> you're an absolute weapon. You b you're a legend, <laughs> Ollie the legend, Ollie, Ollie the foot legend, foot legend. the foot soldier. <laughs> I guess you could call him Matador. <laughs> God, Jesus. I was going to say you could call him Achilles because his only weakness is feet. <laughs> or the, oh, the heel. I like that. What a that's kind of very works. good. Yeah, kind of works. yeah, it kind of does. Little nice little segue there. There we go. Should we talk about the album? Yeah, speaking of. <laughs> the Achilles. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got me notes. I've made me notes. You've got some notes. And I've do. made me notes and I've got I've got iPad this week. Ooh. iPad. Moved it's up in world. One up from paper and pen. Yes. I didn't use paper and pen. You mocked me so badly for the paper and pen note taking. It's all right. That is synonymous with my generation. Why do I keep stepping into a northern accent? I don't, I don't know. know. It's a problem. So, anyway, Night Clubbing, Grace Jones. So, uh, the fifth studio album from Grace Jones, actually. Yeah, now... Dart in her mouth. Do you like that? Do you like... Now, this... this uh, the, I do well, love a well, good dart, well, I do. The, well, we're going to have to talk about the cover, even though the Spotify listeners won't be able to see it. But if you um, if this is on Spotify and you Google Grace Jones Night Clubbing, you will see the album cover. Mm. Um very clever the way that they've done you see how angular it is it's wicked it is isn't it and grace jones sporting her um her customary flat top haircut which you had i did you had the exact same haircut well, i think not... i've actually seen this photo of you looking not not doing like a justin trudeau but with a flat top and a cigarette in your mouth possibly 
Good job no one's got that picture. No, they don't actually. No, no, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so by the time that Grace Jones recorded this album, she's already kind of really well established herself within the disco scene. So she started off as a, as a, not as a model, <clears throat> was where she started. And I she, she did. Yeah, she frequented Studio 54, uh, which is the, the, the big disco nightclub in New York. Oh, okay. New York, where Tony goes. That was loud. Tony Monero. And uh, and uh, yeah, so she she um, she was pretty big on the on the disco scene. She she'd cut four of their albums, and but nineteen eighty one by nineteen eighty one she was kind of on the cusp of of breaking into like this new sound. So this was quite a, a reggae ba- based album, but it fuses um, art pop, synth pop, funk, so all the kind of melting pot of sounds that were coming out in the very very early eighties. And that was sort of coming through from the disco, so the so sort of the kind of the Roxy music type sound, the the, the fused with craft work. You'd got Bowie making sort of overtures into electronic music at that stage. Mm. It was all fusing together. You've got this great big melting pot of different styles of music and genres. And Grace Jones took that and and took a kind of reggae vibe and, and applied it to it. Um, reggae vibe. Yeah. A reggae vibe. Okay. Do you like that? Reggae vibe, or the way you said it. The way I said, no, the way I used the, the the term reggae vibe. Yeah, it was very out of character for you. I know. I enjoyed it. I know. Um, and um, recorded this album in um, the Caribbean. Uh, so he recorded it on Island Records, which was owned by a guy called Chris Blackwell, and he had a team of session musicians that he used at the, um, his studios, Compass Point Studios, hmm. um, and. They were meant to go and record just the one album, but they produced so much material that they actually produced two albums from that that one series of recording sessions. Right. <clears throat> and also, unusually for the way that they recorded, and I suppose they do now, if they hadn't nailed a track in three takes, they'd just stop and move on to the next one. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They if they 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 gave themselves right. If we haven't got it in three takes, that's it. We just we'll just go on to the next track. For this, <coughs> for this specific for, project, for, no, for the whole of these, for the all for that for whole the recording albums. session, they did over a course of weeks, mm. um, and produced they produced so much material that's enough for two two albums. So oh, there okay. was Warm Leatherette, which was the album that came out before this, and then Night Clubbing was the second album from the. That from wasn't that. Grace Jones. No, she covered the the uh, the song Warm Leatherette. That rubbish song. Oh. Um, oh, oh, come on, it's rubbish. Really? It's, it's pioneering in terms really? of electronic music. Yeah, but I think you should be really, really careful. It's rubbish. Go and go and listen <clears throat> to "Warm Leatherette" by whoever it's by. The Normals or something. The Normal. Like that. The Normal. The Normal. That's yeah. it. Rubbish. Rubbish song. It's quite funny, but it's not good. So she'd been spotted in '77. She recorded um, Edith Piaf's "La Vie en Rose." Do you like? Oh, do you like the French way I did that then? Yeah, you're all over the accents today. I am, aren't I? And um, Chris Blackwell from Ireland heard this. I thought she'd be ideal to um, to sing sort of the stuff that they were starting to put together. And they just they they, they all got together and just came up with this magic formula, and it worked. Um, okay. It's uh, you can I tell you what, it was recorded in Nassau in the Bahamas, and I, and when you think about that and you listen to the album, it actually has a, that feel to it. Okay. It's kind of that that laid back island vibe. <laughs> you oh use vibe God. two I'm times so, in one recording. So all over it today. You are. Um, You're going to get all the young listeners <clears throat> into this one. Yeah. Um, if you want a really great album to listen to on a summer afternoon, when you're sitting outside or on the beach drinking yeah. drinking some cold beers, and the sun's just coming to set. And you're sort of getting yourself in that mood for the evening, going out partying. This is the album for it. This is the album. This is the album for it. I like that review a lot. Yeah, that it, that is actually going to make me listen to. I this. think I think you will find, um, it's this this would be an album, a for prees. Nice, because it gets you in the mood. I like that. It's chilled. It's relaxed. Have you just spent the last week <clears throat> researching how to? 
talk to the younger generation. No, not at all. How to appeal. I've got no idea how to talk to the younger generation. You're doing I've a good spent, job. I spent the last week listening to um, Grace Jones's Nightclub, you know, oh, of course, yeah. thinking what a fantastic album this is. I'd forgotten how good it was. And we also <coughs> got the um, the 12-inch single of Pull Up to the Bumper. So that's the album? That's the album. That's a single that's a from twang, this? From that album, yeah. Okay. Um, so Pull Up to the Bumper, when they wrote it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be quite sexually explicit. Although Grace Jones would never admit to it, she just said it's whatever you want it to be. But it's supposed to be quite uh, quite explicit when you listen to the lyrics, right? And um, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. But at this point, what I wanted to say was, um, uh, I I believe that um, we've had a couple of um, we have a couple of phone ins. We've had a couple of voice messages, right? Unfortunately, <coughs> I didn't get to the phone either time. I keep doing this. Keep leaving my phone on silent and Oh. On that note, I noticed on the way in you've put new locks on the studio doors. Oh, yeah, I did. And I not- I noticed that when I came in, it swung back and locked self locked itself as I let go. Brilliant system, isn't it? So he's not gonna really get in, good. is he? No, no, I well, hopefully not. Yeah, no, so- no, it's fine, it's fine, he won't get he in. Won't get he in. won't get in. No, no. Because I don't want him back this week. Not after that fiasco last week. We were, yeah, we were there for a while. Yeah. And he just came out of nowhere. He wasn't invited. He wasn't invited. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. He just he just gets yeah. in the way and I'm he just can't. He's a listener. I'm, Probably I'm, at this point, it's too late anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Answer the show. Uh, you, you said you'd received a couple of messages. Shall I show you? Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to listen to them. I'll show you one of them now. Yep. I'll show you one a bit later on. Yeah. Space let's, it out a bit, maybe. Yeah. Let's have, let's have our first caller. This this one was unusual. I'm not going to lie. It's it's not a musician. <coughs> oh really? Yeah. That's that's quite unusual. So I thought we. It's it's a it is a famous person. Is it? I mean, so one. We, we've had a few phone calls, but the two that we've had that are famous, I missed. Oh right, okay. So we've had a couple of others. A couple of people just being saying, you know, love the podcast. Yeah. Really cool. Could you cover this album? And yeah. we wrote them all down. <coughs> yeah. We will do them at some point. Yeah. Had, so uh, to, I don't know what we've had. Yeah. Well, first of all, we've had. Um, We've had uh, a um, a message from uh, so this we've asked. Do you want to do that while I'm trying to find yeah, so, the recording? Yeah. So um, Mark and the BT boys uh, have been in touch with us from um, deepest darkest Cornwall, and um, <clears throat> they've uh, asked Mark and the BT boys have asked if we can um, do a review of um, the Tapau album. Um, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Tapau. <clears throat> Tapau. Um, Bridge of Spies. So yeah, we're going to be covering that because it's a great album, Mark and the the uh, BT Boys, um, John Coffey. No, we won't be touching Spando Ballet through the barricades. Not this time. Um, no, thank you very much. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yes, we will be looking at the Tapau album, Bridge of Spies. I have found the first recording. Okay, so who's this? Who's this from then? You're about to find out if you'd like to pop the I'm, headphones. I'm, on. I'm absolutely. Intrigued about this? Do you want to? Um... It's 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 weird. I I think just oh, you can't reach them. No, I can't. Oh. <clears throat> All I'm going to say is just listen to it. And is it someone I know? Don't... Yeah, you should know them. <clears throat> okay. I think you should. They're quite famous. You have one new message. You hear that? Yeah. Anyway, I must tuck into another Joffo bar 
I'll call you next week. Hopefully Nancy will be such an imbecile this time. <laughs> he's and a, a bar as well. Poor Nancy. A chance to I know. Jaffo bar, please do. Signing off, David Suchet. David Suchet. David Suchet. The one and only. Poirot. I didn't know he was a listener. I didn't know he was a lisper. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know he's linked into, into his Joffo bars. Yeah, I know. The, oh, he the, loves the off-brand the ones. Off-brand, the off-brand <laughs> chocolate bar of choice. And he just he, <clears throat> I didn't like it. He, it was quite rude to his uh maid. Yeah, Nancy. Nancy. I presumed it was his maid. Could be his wife. Could be. I don't think he'd have a wife by the sounds. I don't know. I don't know anything about David Suchet apart from the, right. you know he's a fantastic actor in Poirot. And sure, sure. Um. How do they edit the lisp out on Poirot? I suppose the same way you can edit like blemishes out on your CGI. <laughs> For audio. Computers can do anything. Yeah, they you can. Know, they you can. know that, don't you? Brilliant. There you go. Well, David, David, thank you so much for calling in. It's been lovely to hear from you. Um, I, I was concerned it might have been Craig again calling <laughs> Craig Adams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, um, it was it was David Sothe. <laughs> David Sothe. <laughs> and well, because for Craig, I've been doing a bit of like research just in case he did call and we caught him. I've been oh, watching a few you? Grand Tour episodes, so I could talk to him about his. Um, it was was he have a Golf GTI? Did he? Or something? Yeah, yeah, he had a yeah. Golf GTI. He said, yeah. yeah. But David, thank you very much for calling in. It's been great to hear from you. Um, yeah. You are a legend, and please do try and call back, and we will endeavour to answer the phone the next time you ring. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're not in the studio all the time. We do go and do other things, and uh, we will try and talk to you, David. Yes. We'll do our best. Maybe oh. tone back on those Joffo bars as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. And I think that might be causing your tongue a bit of issue. The and give, give Nancy a bit of a... Go a break. Yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't deserve it, does she? Yeah. Anyway... So, Night Clubbing, they released six singles from it. Do you know any of these? So, Demolition Man, I don't think you'll know. I've seen that face before, Libertango. If you heard it, I think you'd know it. Pull Up To The Bumper. Do you know that one? These, are, I think these are all songs I know if I heard Yeah, them. you wouldn't know if you heard That's it. That's the problem. The um, second one I heard, I think I've heard. Yes, you have. Uh, Use Me, Feel feel Up, and Walking In The Rain um, were the singles released from that album. Right. And they were all released quite quickly. So between February and October 1981, they released six singles from the album. Wow. Um, which sort of kind of, you know, put Grace Jones firmly on the la- on the map. Um, so, because Grace Jones is from, uh, from the Caribbean. I think she's from the Bahamas or she's from one of mm. the islands out there. So, yeah, I think going back to her roots kind of gave her the kind of the impetus to to um you know produce some of her finest well I think is some of her finest material. Hmm. Um she's a very striking looking woman, isn't she as well? Yeah, I think it's the uh haircut, to be honest. She was always she's always had been a bit kind of like you know, people have thought she's a bit strange. But I think I mean I recently so I know that Is that uh, just like an eighties thing? Is that just like a people from the well, 80s not know. being possibly. that accepting or possibly um so one of the tracks was actually written by sting of the police demolition man oh, right yeah and he re-recorded it on one of the on the police album ghost in the machine some some time later um but yeah great and that um that i that iconic artwork is actually um was was um painted it's a painted photograph that one, yeah, that's a painting. That's a painted. That's a painted photograph. This one or this, this one? one? The nightclub. At the that's night... painted. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? What? Which is why, which is why it's so angular, because those aren't obviously those aren't real, real angles. It was chopped. You don't think so? No. You don't reckon it's just like? No, it's painted. Great album. Okay. Great album. It's a really cool sounding album. Yeah, it is. Um. So, we've got another caller. I believe. I mean, not on the line right now. No, we had a, another. We did have another caller. Yeah. Um. Also, another weird one. <coughs> right. Famous. Yeah. Again. 
So yet again, jackpot, two in one episode. Fantastic. Unbelievable. What's better is this one is a musician. Oh, really? Singer from the 80s. Oh, excellent. Let's yeah. hear it then. Here we go. Let's hear the message. Um, just so, Someone I know, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Someone, oh, someone you'll know. Someone yeah. everyone will know. Um, can you give an ear off? Because I want to hear it as well. Yeah. Hi there, this is Cher from the 1980s. Uh, I'm just ringing in to say how much I really am enjoying your podcast. Um, but, uh, I really like the lexicon con 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 of love. What a one you did. It was great. I'm really hoping that you two guys would like to uh, uh, feature one of my albums from the 1980s. Because, you know, my vocals are all real. <laughs> so, yeah, if you believe in my love, yeah, get in touch, guys. Okay, peace out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a robot. <laughs> yeah. I think... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Cher, thank you so much for calling in. If you want to share the robot. Charge your battery. Will we, will, we, will we review a Cher album? Well, I don't... I'm trying to think if there was a Cher album. Yeah, there was a Cher album in the 80s. Of course there was. There's we all, that album with We All Sleep Alone on it. So, which is a shame because... Um, what? That song she did called Believe. Mm. I love that song. Even though you like it? Yeah, I love I just think it's fantastic. If you go out to a party, that's a song that's going to get you dancing. Yeah, oh, okay. There's quite Isn't a lot it? of songs that do that. There's quite a lot of songs yeah. now. What, what would you... Me? Get, top personally, th- top no. three. Top three songs that would get you, no matter what state you were in, mm. how gloomy you were feeling, went to a party, it was rubbish. It's a rubbish party. Yeah. Let me set the scene for you. Okay. The wind's whistling on a dark and dusty night. No, we've done that before. No, no, you um, can't do that again. You're at, you're at a rubbish party. The vibe's not happening. You, none of your friends are there. Yeah. A few people you think are really weird. And there's a song comes on, and I've, you've got to get up and dance to it. What get up and dance. It? Number one. Yeah. You make my dreams. Hall and Oates. Hall and Oates. Always. I mean, they've used that for a lot of adverts at the moment. They use that for that lager one. Well, lager one. There's a there's a, a small brewery, uh, then they use it for their beer or lager. I haven't seen. I don't yeah. watch TV, so I yeah. don't know. But every single time, I I just like the way they say you make my dreams come true. They don't go. You, you make her. Yeah. You'll make my dreams, dreams come, come true. true. Do 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 do. Yeah. Hold I notes. just like you make her. Yeah. You'll make my dreams. Hall There's some great singles, Hollow Notes, and we will we'll possibly be covering a Hollow Notes album I would in, love in, that. in the future. I would love that. I don't know if I've got... Out of Touch. Oh, that is such a That's good That's a good song as well, yeah. yeah. That's on here. Number two? Number two. It's interesting, you've got a 1980s song as your number one get up and dance. I've only realised it does that in about the last year and a half. Have you? I, I was Because I've got an 80s playlist. Yeah. And what I'll, actually, what I'll do is I'll link. I'll put a link to my playlist. That'd be really cool because it's got a lot of stuff. That yeah, we I've heard. And... I've heard some of it. And it's a really good it's playlist. A, it's a good playlist yeah. for it all. Yeah. So I'll put that in the description of the video if you're interested for Spotify users. Um, <clears throat> as in, like, if you have Spotify, you can do that. Yeah. Um, Number two. And I was. You ask. Oh, never mind. Fine. Cut you short there, did I? Yep. Sorry. I found it because I was trying to find new songs for the playlist. Yeah. Remembered I'd heard it a long time ago, and I was like, oh, I recognise this song. Listened to it the whole way through. I was obsessed with it for about a week. So in my house in Leeds, I played it every day without fail. And I'd sprint around the house with it on, with the speaker in my hand. Brilliant. Everyone hated me. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Um, number two. Do it have to be 80s? No. <clears throat> oh, there's, a, there's a song pause. called Feed em to the Lions. Adam and the Ants? No. Oh. Solo 45. It's not an old song, <clears throat> but it's old compared to today's <clears throat> stuff. I think it came out early 2010s. A really good song, but it doesn't really 
it's only like kind of my generation that enjoys mm. it, I think. So we we used to go to um, clubs, and when the night's starting to get <clears throat> get on, and it's people are starting to like get a bit tired, the DJs always used to play it. And as soon as you heard it, you out of nowhere, this big rush of energy, and everyone's jumping around and like pushing each other again. Brilliant. That's that's really the kind of song one. you want at a club, isn't it? It is, yeah. Just that song to give you that second rush and that, that yeah. get you back up on the dance floor. And and that, and... that works everywhere. So if you're at Prees and someone's decided to put on, um, God, there's oh, that awful song that everyone puts on at Prees, and I want to smack them every time. Oh, I've um, never been to Prees, so I wouldn't know. Um, 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 Mr. Brightside. Is that what it's called? Oh, not the Killers. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hate yeah. that song. As soon as that comes on, someone puts Solo 45 and it's just like, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know what my third is, though. I can't think of any more That's that all right. do it. I'm happy with what you've given me what so What about far? yours? Um, I think we'll cover those off when we come to do them on the albums. Oh, you tease. Yeah. You tease, yes. Paul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, Shares Believe is a, is a song I think that most people would uh, relate to and think, Oh, I've got to get up and have a dance. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be. Yes, yes. So, I thoroughly recommend checking out Grace Jones' Nightclub. It it is a quality album, and it has got such a great vibe to it. Is she still making songs? Yes. She, In fact, who's the... Somebody's daughter, a famous actor or director, I can't think who it is now... I'm sure it's Sophie Fines, Rafe, Rafe Fines, M in, in the Bond films, the new mm. Bond films. I'm sure it's his daughter has just made a documentary about Grace Jones and about a, a gig, some gigs she did in the last 12 months. And wow, she okay. she must be, how old must she be? She must be in her 60s now. Really? Yeah, she's got to be. And she still is absolutely, if you, if you haven't seen it, it's on, it is on Netflix and it is on YouTube and I think it's on Amazon Prime as well. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's if you put in Grace Jones' film, I'm sure it's Sophie Fines is the director. It is really good. It's a great film. I checked it out the other day. I actually, when I was thinking about doing this as one of the reviews, mm. and it just shows you the longevity of Grace Jones, and she's still, she's brilliant. Her stage presence is fantastic. Um, still wears these really crazy hats, really sort of, um, Art Nouveau outfits, you know, the kind of stuff that you would see on a on a catwalk that would then be like diluted down to become like yeah. fashion. Um, but she, her voice is still so strong. And then she goes back to the Caribbean to um, her home and and sees her parents, and her parents are still alive. And it's like wow. wow. And she she goes and has dinner with them. She takes her son. Her son is incredibly cool looking. Um, very cool looking guy her mm. son and she takes him back with her to to meet her to to meet his grandparents um but there's quite a lot of intermixed footage of her on stage performing some of these she still does these these songs and she's she's so good so good this i'm taking is the like prime of her career well I, see i to me <coughs> i always thought it was but i'm i'm now having seen that i'm thinking actually so she performs songs on on this on the documentary that I've not heard before, and all, and all of a sudden I was like, I've got to find out where these come from because they're great. Mm. It's it's songs that I'm not familiar with, but they they're really good sounding songs. So um, yeah, check it out. It's good. We'll do. Final question on Grace Jones. Yes, I think it's quite obvious and straightforward considering she came from America, but her music got broke into America. Yeah, it did. Mm. Was she American musician? To, to break into the UK then, or was it the other way round? I well, how, she how? she's not American, is she? So she, she's she's from the Caribbean. But you so. said they recorded. She, she yeah, recorded in NASA and the Bahamas. But she started off as a, as a model, it? and she was going to Studio Fifty Four. Oh, that was it. That yeah, was it. That's, so that's where she was. She was discovered. Me. She was discovered right. um, as a model, and they and and one of the producers thought, "Oh, what if she can sing?" Who thinks that? I don't know, but she could. There must she, have been some more. Yeah, like, she, yeah but she's got an, she's got an amazing whatever. voice, a really distinctive voice. Um, that's a really good question. I I think yeah, I think she broke the American and the American market was where she was discovered because mm. this music is 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 
great for that kind of that market. Yeah, it is. Cause and I think it then sort of came over to... Chicago were having their house scene around that time. Yeah. Or was that a bit before? I think that was the 80s. Could have been, yeah. When they started doing house. So that would have tied and then, and then And then, of course, you know, it broke over here. Mm. I know... I know. Um, I think John Taylor at Duran Duran and Nick Rhodes were big Grace Jones fans. Oh, really? Yeah, they they she's one of she's an influence for them. <coughs> okay. They do they do say that she's in. They talk about her quite a lot. The other thing I have to ask as well, I've got I had more questions, is when you were. So what year did this come out? Eighty one. So when you were around in eighty one, mm. how did you receive the album? Like. At that age, was, so, it, was it big for you, or was yeah, it just like I, something else that I other people it listened on, to? No, it wasn't actually. So when I first bought that, I mean, I bought that when it just after it came out, and I heard it on uh, David David Jensen, who was a DJ on radio at the time, used to do like um, a, a late e- an evening show, um, and I think him and Peter Powell were two of the DJs that featured some of her tracks. Peter Powell used to have some really good, used to have like a dance hour. We'd play like dance tracks of the day, and they featured Grace Jones um, on that. And they, they actually played the because I hadn't heard Le on Rose from '77 until after this. And I think they played yeah, it was in the summer, so they played "Pull Up to the Bumper" when that came out. Right, this twelve-inch here. Yeah, and um, of course I heard it. And I thought, wow, what's that? Mm. That's brilliant. What a what? Who's singing this? They said Grace Jones, and. Um, I think what my friend Mark at the time was very up on the fashion scene, and I said to him, "Who's Grace Jones?" He's, "Oh yeah, Grace Jones. She's a model." And he showed me some pictures of her in some of the magazines he'd got. So, like, oh, she's released this album. He said, "Oh, she, he said, well, she's released albums before that. This is probably the fourth or fifth one she's released." Right. I didn't know, so I hadn't been exposed. From then, and you were like, "This is cool music." Yeah, yeah. So I went straight down to the uh, record store and purchased Nightclubbing. Which- was it American, the record? No, no. I didn't want to say like saying it. As far as the record store. Okay. <laughs> and um, it's that share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A... Record yeah. store. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. can't get it out of my head. And yeah, I purchased nightclub and it, it was... What about the rest of your friends? Because you had a you had yeah, a bunch of mates. How yeah, did I they did. see it? Yeah. Were they not as No, they were... Into so, it or... so a couple of them... I know a couple of them were, were really into it. Uh, there's a couple of them... See, we had, we had quite a... We were into each into our own kind of like thing. So one of them was really into the jam and that kind of sound at the time. One of them was really into the Stranglers. A couple of us were really into like the electronic scene, sort of you know the new romantic stuff. Mm. Um, one was sort of a bit more into the sort of like the kind of rock stuff. So, okay. um, I, and actually, this I could tell you a story about when we used to get together. So there was one particular. Um, Halloween, Ooh. Halloween, Ooh. trick or treat. Okay, so we decided to go, or we said we were going to go trick or treating. A number of us. How old, a group how of us. old were you first? Set the scene. Um, I need to know how old we were. So this was this was eighty one. Fifteen. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> I'm messing with the headphones. And uh, we we were going to go trick or treating, or so we led certain members of the group that we were going we were going to go whoops we were going to go trick or treating okay and um so wait, wait, wait you you tricked certain members no there, no I, I, there was in our 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 gang yeah if you will right <laughs> um there was there was one one guy that we thought we'd, we'd play a little bit of a, a we we be a little prank prank, a prank. yeah it's a prank why do you say prank weirdly i don't know i don't you do prank <laughs> Plank. What? You say, yeah, you say it like that. Plank. A little, a little, a little. Plank. That's how you say it. I don't know. Plank. Yeah, I, it's like. Buxom bowl of blumange. I'm just watching the microphone go into the red every time you did that. Um, so, yeah, we thought, we thought we'd play a. Prank. <laughs> a joke. <laughs> a prank. Why you, you do this? Like, it's prank. Prank. But you kind of. <laughs> Make sure your lips. You do it like that, and you literally your mit, lips meet. Prank, like. I'm not going to say it again. Prank, prank. Did you have a t-shirt, by the way? The Psycho Deville's. Is brilliant. Carry Mike, on, just. Mike, cheers. 
Um, current story. Yeah, so we thought we'd play a little bit of a joke on the one one member of our gang. Yeah, and we told him we were going to go all going to go trick or treating. Okay. So he's like, brilliant. So we um we we planned it for ages that we we're going to go trick or treating, and we said, come around and call for us at this other friend's house, but his parents don't know that we're going to be there. So when you come to the door, knock on the door and in in a in the do the voice of a gnome and shout trick or treat. And then we know it's you, and we'll come down. How I don't know how he fell for this. I really don't. Yeah. But anyway, so so he's, he's like, well, what do you mean? So so you come to the door, you go, trick or treat, and we we will come down. So we said, but you've got to do it three times because they 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 won't hear you. They're a bit hard of hearing. Right. And he said, right, okay. So so anyway, we'll we all pitched up at this friend's house. Yeah. And um, we decided to prepare a surprise for him. So we got to book it. And um, we all urinated in the bucket, <laughs> right. and there was eight of us. So there was a. Oh, it was a full bucket. It was a full bucket, and what he didn't realise that their front door, the porch, was the hall window was right above it. So this little window that opened out like this. Okay. And you, you couldn't see it because you were in the porch, and it was just like there, above where right, you were standing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I get it. So, eight o'clock comes. It's dark. No, no street lights on. Yeah, we're all sitting there in the house because his parents weren't there. They'd gone out. Yeah, we're all sitting there in the dark, giggling away in this. Like going shh, shh, hear us. All of a sudden, there's trick or treat. <laughs> I try not to laugh. Yeah. Trick or treat. <laughs> we're like shut up, shut up, shut up. Trick or treat. It's it right. it starting to get really like irate. The fact that he's like outside, bang on the door, squeaking trick or treat. Yeah. We flew open the windows. He looked up and we went treat and took the bucket of Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> took it full you in the face. Did yeah. This to him. Yeah. Took it full in the face. Oh, that is disgusting. Full in the face. Eyes open. Mouth open. <laughs> Eyes so, open. So he went. He went. We went treat and he went. <laughs> <laughs> he baby birded himself. That's what we call um, it in the industry. Yeah, he was. Um, so I, I guess the way it worked was in three stages. There is first of all there was the shock stage of like what on earth has just hit me. Mm. Secondly, there was the realization, oh my life, that's not water, that's something else. Yeah. And I realized what it is. Yeah. And then third, there was the reaction stage was, it stings like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I don't goodness. know why we did that. It was a horrible thing to I'm do. I'm trying to work out how this tied into what the questions are. I was asking. I've got no <laughs> idea. I've got no idea. It just came. I just suddenly started thinking about. Um, and uh, well, so, what did your friends think of Grace Jones? Funny you mentioned Grace Jones. <laughs> we pissed in our friend's face. Well, we didn't do that. It wasn't like a golden shower, was it? It was. Oh. It was a. It was a. It was a. A, a joke. Oh, you did it again. <laughs> I'm not doing it. It was a prank. Prank. And anyway, on that note... <laughs> on that note, so any any other callers this week? Not this week. Not this week? No. Okay, so that's it then. That is. I'm a feared. Okay, so... Hopefully Craig Adams. It's probably a, a good time to uh, to draw it to a... I think it's perfect, yeah. Draw it to a close. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast. So Grace Jones, Nightclubbing, it's a great album. Check it out on Spotify. Um, it is available on Spotify. It's available on, on Amazon Prime, because I've checked that out already. Um, the album yes it is it's on every streaming platform it's on every streaming platform um, and let us know what you think of it I'd really really like to know what other people's opinions are yeah once again any stories that you'd like to share with us um, leave them in the comments section ooh we've been talking to someone and we may have a special guest a yes. appearance for a 15-20 minute slot in one of the near we future have. podcasts we have so I was going to mention that this is just to say that um upcoming episode we are going to have a special guest slot from a very very special guest very cool guy yes cool guy craig you know who you are should we should we explain who he is no let's, we let's leave, leave it a surprise just in case he doesn't want to no let's leave we'll it a surprise it as, yeah, yeah 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 he knows who he is and uh there'll be a we're going to do a little interview slot with him and uh, a little featurette mm. so thanks very much for listening to this episode of don't you forget about the 80s if you enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up uh, hit the subscribe button 
And tell and your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to listen. Tell your friend. And don't cover them in urine. Oh. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>